what is it about tiny portable versions of things that are usually larger. For me, I just end up completely smitten with them, and as a fountain pen user, this brass fountain pen from Traveler's Company definitely caught my eye. I got this as a birthday gift earlier this year, my name's Lauren by the way, and I am going to be doing a review of this pen, and it's a bit of a longer term review because I wanted to show you what the patina looks like over time. Unsurprisingly, Traveler's Company knocked the packaging and the branding out of the park. They always do such a lovely job packaging and branding their products, but as slightly more of a surprise, I did not love this pen at first, and I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to show you what I did to make it one of my absolute favorite pens. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of a tweak with pens like this to make it your own, and then you can end up falling in love with it like you had expected you would initially. When I first opened this pen, it was very shiny, very glossy, very golden, and I knew it wouldn't stay that way for very long. As this is definitely considered a pocket pen, the front section is very, very tiny and pretty much unusable unless you post the cap on the back. But when you do that, it ends up being a full-size pen and actually kind of longer than most of the other pens that I use. It comes with a steel nib and fine is the only option that they offer when you buy it. Now in order to get some ink into this pen, all you have to do is unscrew the back and pop an international short cartridge in there. It does come with one, but I am going to fill up an empty cartridge with bottled inks, and I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to be using this sample of Monteverde Olivine, which I tested in a previous video of Olive Green Fountain Pen Inks, and then I fill it up using a blunt end syringe, which I purchased from Goulet Pens. And then all you have to do is pop it right into the pen. And it was really surprisingly easy. I was expecting to make a big mess and I did not. I don't have a converter that is small enough to fit in this pen. As you can see, it's really tiny, but the portability is one of the things I love the most about this pen. So I'm perfectly happy to just refill old cartridges or blank cartridges. However, I am a little bit impatient when it comes to waiting for the ink to come through and... <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's just a matter of closing the pen and putting it nib side down in a jar or something like that so that gravity can do its work, um, but when I'm having a lot of trouble, I sometimes will dip the nib very quickly in a little bit of distilled water and then write it out until the water is gone. Once it eventually did start writing, I tested it out. I try to write out a good amount of a page just so that I can get a feel for it and also so I can show you what it looks like when you write out a couple of paragraphs with the pen. And I do love this ink. I was very excited to use it. But one of my concerns was that the fine nib was going to be too fine for me personally. Whenever a company only offers one nib size or I am unable to find the nib size I want in stock, I know that there is a gamble involved because I tend to prefer medium nibs. I like when a pen is a really juicy writer and fine nibs in maybe a Twisby are perfect for me, but Japanese made fine nibs tend to be a lot finer than Western nibs and so I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't like writing with this pen. To be fair, I don't actually know who manufactures the nibs that are in this pen, but Traveler's Company is a Japanese company, so I was correct in my assessment that this would probably be too fine for me, but I still wanted to give it a try and I wanted to write with it at least until the cartridge ran out. One of the reasons why I prefer to write with medium nibs is that when I have a pen that has a finer tip, I find that I automatically try to press down a little bit harder on the paper and so my wrist and my hand get tired faster than they do on pens that are just kind of effortlessly gliding across the page with tons of ink. Which brings me to another thing about this pen that I think predicted some of why I was having that hand strain from writing with it for longer periods of time, and that is the weight of the pen. Because this pen is brass, and especially with that cap posted in the back, it felt like a relatively heavy pen. It does feel more back-weighted because the front section is so tiny, and so to me, it probably was the combination of the fine nib and the weight of the pen that made it a little bit uncomfortable for me in that sense. As far as the actual grip on the pen, it is a slimmer pen, so if you have a larger hand and you find that you need a little bit more of a bulky pen to grip onto, this might be too slim for you. But don't write this pen off just yet because I ended up finding out that you can actually change the nib pretty easily. There is a similar nib out there that you can get that 
is really easily swappable and I pretty much knew right away that I would be buying that nib and I would be trying that out. So hold on. <laughs> One really good sign is that it writes very well. It writes smoothly, it didn't feel scratchy, it didn't have any flow issues once I got it going at the beginning, and no skips, no hard starts, all good on that side. So I knew that with just that one little change, it was probably going to be a better fit for me, and so I was really excited to try that out. I also wanted to mention that the paper I'm writing on is a 3.7 millimeter grid and it's Tomoe River paper. So that is a very tiny grid. Most grids are usually about five millimeters. So good to keep in mind if you are comparing this to other pens that you have and you wanna kind of see how thick the fine point is. I love how compact this pen is. It even has a little hole at the top that I could put on a lanyard or something like that. So adorable. I'm gonna compare it to some other small pens that I have that you might be familiar with. Up at the top, we've got the Kaweco All Sport. This is the aluminum version of the plastic Kaweco Sport, and that is probably my favorite fountain pen at the moment. I've done a video about it and about how much I love it, but you can see it's a little bit larger than the Traveler's Company. And this green one is the Kaweco Lilliput, which is way smaller than I was expecting it to be, and it's very, very lightweight. I'm now going to show you what the pens look like when they are posted which is kind of, for me, the magic of the pocket pen, that it's something that looks so small and becomes actually usable when you put the cap on the back half of it. And you can see here that the lily put still stays pretty small in comparison to the Traveler's Company brass. It is also much more lightweight than the brass one. The Kaweco All Sport is not as long as the Traveler's Company brass, but it is thicker and feels more substantial in your hand. The Traveler's Company is the heaviest of the three, and it also has a slightly larger nib than the other two, which you can see right here. And I also wanted to show you, the Traveler's Company isn't super usable without the cap, but one thing that I like about the Kaweco All Sport is that I have a pretty small hand, but I find that I can write with the Kaweco All Sport even without the cap posted as it's intended to be used. So if I'm just writing out a quick note, it's easier to do with the All Sport than it is with the Traveler's Company. Also, the nib on the Traveler's Company brass is branded, which is really nice, but it's not going to last too much longer on this pen, at least for me. And just wanted to show you how beautiful that brass looks. And now we're going to show you what it looks like a few weeks later. So this is how the pen had patinaed as of the point where I finished that first ink cartridge. I've been writing with it for a while and I was aware of the fact that it would not stay that shiny that long. I believe that you can polish your brass, um, but that wasn't something that I was intending to do. I think it's really cool that you can see where my hand sits on this pen, and I like that, that I think this is, I just think it's cool. Another thing that I like about this pen, which the video here just reminded me, is that I love how satisfying of a snap you get when you cap and uncap and post this pen. It's just really beautifully smooth and I just think it's very satisfying. And you can also get the cap off and posted very quick because it's not one of those pens that you have to twist to open and close. You can also still see the very minimal branding on the side where it says Traveler's Company made in Japan. And at this point, I was having such a wonderful time doing all these beautiful close-ups of the patina that I was really hoping that that nib swap was going to work out the way I hoped it would. And so a couple of months later, I was ready to make the change. I ordered the nib from JetPens. It's called the Schmidt FH241, and I got it in the medium nib size. It is listed as a compatible product with this pen on jetpens.com and I also saw the YouTube channel Mystery Arts testing it and it actually is more decorative. It's not Traveler's Company branded, but it is a pretty beautiful nib. And so I wasn't sure how this was gonna go, so I took a rubber grip that I bought from JetPens, grabbed hold of the existing nib and sort of twisted to see if I could unscrew it and I could. I did not have to pull it all, I just unscrewed it. There are little tiny threads at the bottom of the nib unit that goes in, and then all I had to do is screw the new one on. You could probably do this really easily without that little rubber grip. I was just being extra careful. This time for ink, I decided to go with a Diamine Chocolate Brown International Short Ink Cartridge. I didn't have to fill this one. They came pre-filled, and so I just went ahead and popped it right into the pen. 
I'm gonna make a quick swatch of this ink since it is a new ink for me. And so if you wanna know more about this swatch book, it's a Chic Sparrow cover in the pocket size and it has a Jet Pens Tomoy River paper insert on the inside. I stamped the pages with an Everyday Explorers Company stamp. And if you wanna see more about that whole process, I have a video just about this swatch book that you can watch. And you can see right here in real time how much quicker the ink started flowing the second time that I used this pen. So that was a good sign. And right away, I can also tell that the line thickness with the medium nib is much more my style, so I'm already very excited about that. Also, this ink is so beautiful, and I am a big fan of chocolate. I do wish that this ink was scented, but it is not. I actually haven't tried any scented inks because I didn't know if they would bother me. Um, has anyone had an experience with those? <laughs> But even without a scent, this ink is pretty much perfectly named. Look at that. So for comparison's sake, I went back to the page I was on with the fine nib and went ahead and wrote a couple of things using the new ink and the new medium nib that I had replaced it with. You can see it's a big difference here. So, you know, if you like a fine nib to start with, the pen will probably be fine for you, but uh, if you, like me, prefer more of a medium, I think that this is a really good option for you. You have to buy an extra piece that doesn't come with the pen because they don't offer it as an option right off the bat, but I really like the pen body and I love the portability and the material and I think it's just an absolutely beautiful pen, so I was very happy that all I had to do was buy an extra nib and it could go from a pen that I'm kind of meh about to a pen that I really love. You can see here that I end up writing on like a box and a half for each line instead of you know just writing inside the tiny 3.7 millimeter boxes like I could with the fine knit pen. And this is actually how I prefer it. Um, I just kind of use this as a, more of a guide than actually trying to write inside of the grid boxes but I actually found that once I changed the nib to a medium, the weight of the pen didn't bother me anymore. I wasn't pushing down as hard to get the amount of ink to come out that I was hoping it would. And it's not a flex nib. I don't know why my hand thinks that it needs to press harder when the line looks too fine. That's just kind of what I automatically do. And so when I could just kind of glide across the page with this beautiful thicker medium line of chocolate brown ink, I just over time could write longer without my hand getting tired and that was great because I do like the way this pen feels. I was not expecting the weight of it to bother me. I think just I needed it to be the right line thickness for my personal preference and as you can see here, it turned out that way in the end. I could not be happier. I kind of want to keep inking up this pen and using it again and again, which is not something that I do very often. I like when my pens run out of ink because it means that I can pick a different one from my collection and write with one that I hadn't written with in a long time or pick a new ink color or whatever it might be. And I kind of want to keep this one going and keep this one in my rotation more often now that I've customized it to be exactly what I want. Wanted. And then I just wanted to show you what the patina looks like just about six months into owning the pen. Another thing I wanted to mention is that this pen makes your hands smell a little bit like coins, which is not my favorite thing about it, but as the pen has patinaed more, I'm finding that I'm noticing the smell less. It could be that I'm just used to it now, or it could be that that happens more when the pen is shiny. I don't really know the science behind it, but look how far it has come. This is what it looked like the day that I bought it. For those of you who use brass pens, do you like to polish yours? Do you like that it gets a lot of patina? I think I thought that I would prefer a really shiny, like yellowy gold brass pen, but I've found that I really come around to the patina. I really do like it and I feel like it makes it mine and it makes it special. I hope that this review was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about buying this pen or if you already have this pen or if there's another fountain pen that you'd like to recommend to me that you really love that you think I would enjoy as well. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you next time.